Hi, I'm Kevin Parker, your state representative from Spokane. I thought it would be neat to show you kind of the inside of the Capitol as well as the outside. Right now I'm standing on the Capitol steps and it might be interesting to note that there's 42 steps from top to bottom because we were the 42nd state admitted into the Union in 1889. When you see clips at home of big rallies or protests, you most likely see them on these steps. They hold approximately 5,000 people. And right in front of me is the Supreme Court building known as the Temple of Justice. It was actually the first building on the Capitol campus. It has a beautiful look over the lake, and it is in that building where some of the most important decisions in the history of our state have been made. You'll notice with me the Winged Victory Monument. This was honoring those who served in World War I. It was constructed to honor the soldiers, sailors, and Marines from the state who lost their lives in this war. It was completed in 1938. And this is the beautiful World War II Memorial. In fact, it was the first in the country to honor those who served in this war. It was installed in 1999. There's large granite stones that are engraved with the major battles fought by the year. A bronze plaque reads, when my country called, I answered. When my country asked, I gave. Reach out now across the years and through the tears. Remember me. You'll also see the Tivoli Fountain. This fountain is a copy of one located in Tivoli, about 16 miles east of Rome, Italy, specifically designed parts from Denmark all the way to Olympia, provided to the state as a gift from the Olympia Tumwater Fountain Foundation. In fact, it's 50 foot in diameter. All the sprays alternatively rise and fall together, creating five different artistic water displays while circulating 600 gallons of water a minute. As you can see, we're inside the Capitol. From here to the top of the dome is 175 feet. From the ground to the top is 287 feet, making the state capitol a very tall building where you can see from most places from the city of Olympia. Right above me is a chandelier that was designed by Tiffany, and it is so large that you can actually put an entire Volkswagen bug in the chandelier. On each of the four corners by the stairway, you'll see flags representing one flag from each of the 39 counties. In front of the flag, you'll notice huge modern-day lanterns. In fact, this is reminiscent of the history of Rome, because whenever the Rome government was in session, lanterns were always lit with fire, signaling to the people that the legislative body was meeting. You'll also notice the Washington Seal. Because of the volume traffic we get from the Capitol, it has been roped off, and anyone that comes by can take a look and see that George Washington, whom the state was named after, has a beautiful seal right directly in the center of the state Capitol. We just stepped into the state reception room. This is a room that is used to host dignitaries that visit our state capitol, as well as occasionally the governor will actually sign bills in this room. If you were to come visit the capitol personally, it'd be very likely that you would end up in this room as we have hundreds and thousands of school children every single year visiting the state capitol in this room. I am standing on the largest loom carpet in the United States. It was built in 1928 by the Mohawk Company. Around us are Italian marble walls as well as chandeliers once again made by Tiffany. Just down from the state reception room is actually the House Chamber where every one of the 98 members of both on the Republican and Democratic side will walk through these hallways and then take their seat at the desk. And if you come on the House floor you'll notice here are 98 desks and this is where we come when we cast votes in the state legislature. In the beginning of the session, we're here for just a few minutes a day, maybe 30 to 45. Towards the end of session, we can be on the floor as much as 12 to 15 hours a day. You'll also notice the, the flags being escorted in, that they are rehearsing because every day at 10 o'clock when the session does convene, there's an official demonstration of the colors. Right here is my desk, and if you'll notice in the House of Representatives, what's very interesting is we actually vote electronically. So if a bill comes up, and if you're a yes vote, you push the green button. If you're a no vote, you push the red button. And right up there is an electronic scoreboard, if you will, where your vote is immediately cast for the House to see. If you look right up there, we have um, a gallery. The gallery is empty right now because the House is not in session, but on very controversial bills or bills of great public interest, it's likely that the gallery could be full. However, on most bills, people don't seem to find it quite as exciting as a Sunday afternoon football game. Right now we're in a caucus room. There's both a caucus room for the Democratic Party and one for the Republican Party. This is where the members on each side meet as a party 
to discuss how they're going to vote on bills. This is where some of the most heated conversations will take place within their own party. We can be in this room sometimes from one to four to five hours at a time discussing the various bills that will actually hit the House floor immediately following our discussion. Right now we're standing in the Senate gallery that overlooks the State Senate. As the House has 98 members, the State Senate has 49 members. You'll see that in the House, the walls were French marble. In this House of the Chamber, they're German marble. In the House, members vote electronically. In the State Senate, they vote by roll call. Right now, we're in the back of the Capitol, also known as the portico of the Capitol. Interestingly enough, back when the governor traveled by stagecoach, this is where the governor would be dropped off, and the height in the building was built so that literally the governor could step right off from the stagecoach on an even field right onto the cement here and walk into the Capitol. Right now, I'm standing in front of the John L. O'Brien building, also known as the House Office Building. This is where the House members both office as well as have many of our committee meetings. This right here is a sundial, and it's known as one of the places where people gather around. In fact, interestingly enough, this sundial has a pictorial history of the history of Washington State, and the sundial itself is how people originally told time back in Babylon around 2,000 years ago. Right now we're inside the John L. O'Brien building and we're about to walk into a committee room. And the reason a committee room is significant is because this is where bills are really debated in their infancy form. If you follow me inside a committee room, you'll see the room laid out in a couple different ways. You'll see right over here we have where people that are interested in hearing about the bill will fill this room. Then this table is where people will testify about a bill. For instance, if you wanted to write a bill about shorter school days, you would come and testify and talk about that. Then right up here, this is where the members sit and listen to all the bills. Now the way a bill becomes a law is fairly interesting. It begins with an idea, and ironically about roughly 90% of the laws come from constituents who have ideas about how to make life a little bit better. Then it is introduced either by a House member or a Senate member, and then it's co-sponsored by a member, usually of the other party. Once it's co-sponsored, the bill will eventually be signed a committee. And then if it comes to this committee, we would talk about your bill right here. We would, we would ask pretty hard questions about what's the purpose of this bill, what are the needs of this bill. And when creating legislation, think of the entire building and the entire infrastructure as designed to stop legislation, not to start legislation. It's designed to make it very difficult so that only the best laws get passed. Then, if your bill makes it out of committee, it will go to the House floor. Then if there's enough votes to move it and it gets voted off the House floor, it will go over to the Senate and the entire process begins again, where it goes through committee, then it has to go to the House floor if it gets out of committee, and then ultimately a bill does not become a law until signed by the governor. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Capitol. This is a friend of mine, Representative Mark Ericks. Mark is on the other side of the political aisle than I, but one of the neat things about the legislative process is you can have really meaningful friendships, both Republican and Democrat, and at the end of the day, this system is designed to where we work together, and when Republicans, Independents, and Democrats work together, that is when Washington benefits as a state. And, and I agree with him 100%, and I'm just starting to really like him now. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Capitol today. It was fun to walk you through it. This is a very special building, and it's a very special opportunity to get to serve and represent you in Olympia. If you're between the ages of 14 and 16, we have what's called the PAGE program, where you can come and spend a week here, and, and basically during that week, you'll see the political process from the inside out, and I hope that it's a very meaningful experience. My information is on the screen, and if you're ever interested in becoming a PAGE, or you have a brother or sister that's interested, please contact all the information's on the screen below. And again, thank you so much. Feel free to call. And if you're ever in Olympia, please stop by my office and I'd love to show you around and say hello to you.